to Y's front suspension. They do sell YSS kits to firm up the suspension. I think it's very fine for me. It doesn't have any dive when you hit the front brake get a pretty good clip, which I did. And it didn't bother me. So I think it's very okay. Talking about the brake, this does have front ABS brake and rear disc, but not ABS. So how does that work out? works out very well for me. I don't do any dirt riding. I am going to use this motorcycle to explore the close to 400 miles of gravel roads here in Loudoun County. Having said that, that's the reason for the yellow fog lights. Late evening in the summer, if I want to just keep out riding, I'll have plenty of light because that is the most dismal excuse for a headlight. It is nice LED, looks cool has nice DRL daytime running light but it is not a bright light and you put that little cage in front of it like I did and it's it just seems even dimmer so the fog lights these are ox beam very good fog lights I like them a lot what do I like about it I like the styling look at that front fender it's got its nice little rivet showing looks very cool and it's metal which is saying something on this bike because the majority of your body work is plastic. The front wheel, nice size. I love the black with the silver spokes, reminiscence of old school dirt bikes. Really dig it. Um, I did finish off the axle with a nice um, cover nut. Moving on back just a little bit, or up, I should say, on the headlight. I've gone with the Moto Skill headlight and rack, which I will actually go through and uncover everything in a few minutes because I have my utility bag on the front, carry a few tools in there, a couple band aids, um, my wallet, my phone, whatever I decide to put in there, that's what I use it for. And I thought it looked kind of cool. So, as you can see, I have the USB port that has the voltmeter on it All right, and it is wired black and red directly through the tunnel there right on through here into the battery compartment and it comes out of my battery tender plug right here and I don't know if you can see it really sorry about the lighting in here folks it's the garage and I'm not about to spend a couple thousand on studio lights for stuff I'm not gonna do because again I'm not going to be that guy that's going to show you how to put this stuff on or tell you how to change your oil. I'm an instructor by profession and um, I'm not going to do it all the time. So Moto Skill center rack. I chose this one just because I like the way it connected down here. The down tubes it looked very sturdy and it is. Connects right in. Right into the frame. Very good. And the reason I got it it's because I kept kicking this and as you can, I don't know if you can see I've got some very light scratches here that's from my boot going over because I'm short 30 inch inseam 5'7 and um, it's a tall bike I'm not gonna lie but it's kinda cool it's very cool I love it moving on up again remote for my camera when I'm riding I put the center bar in I got this one off of Amazon I paid $11 I got this off of Amazon, I paid $7. And I think it looks very retro. Right below that is I have the tachometer and hour meter. A couple other people have these on. I just like to turn it on, watch my tach go, and I'll turn it off when I come home. Keeps track of how long I'm doing it. So I guess this is actually a 100 mile review also because I now have 108 miles. So let's see. Let's see. Can you see it? Reflection. Yep, right there. There we go. 108 miles on it. And I would have more, but it is cold. It's been winter time. Phone hooder. I'll cover that in a second. This is a um, cow car. <laughs> I think cow car. Something. Anyway, it's a very good phone hooder. I'll show you in a few minutes when I uncover everything. Um, I really like it. It works out very well for what I'm doing. Took one of the mirrors off only because you can't see crap but your shoulders anyway. Left the other one on because in the state of Virginia you need a mirror. That's fine. Turn signals. 
um, I haven't moved anything and they've never really been quite straight with each other. One point's down, one point's up. I guess they use the same mount. Uh, QA thing, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Not a lot else to talk about about the rack. I'll cover that in a second. These lights, these lights are awesome. These ox beam lights. The ox beam lights, I like the yellow, right? I think they look really cool. They look very cool. And they work very nice. So the way they're wired is red and black wire coming from here, going into the headlight housing, which I took off. Inside the headlight housing, there is a black, which is key hot, and a green, which is ground. And there's a switch. The switch, tap the camera. There's a switch. The switch is key on, right? Talked about the block being key hot. And they are very bright lights. Very bright lights. All right? Look good. I like them. And again, that's downstream of the battery. It's connected into the battery tender plug back here. So I actually, um, oh, that's <laughs> that's the USB. So what I was going to say, sorry, I got off track a little bit about the lights. But what I was going to say is about the USB is I have it wired into this on this side of the battery um, because I can see what's coming into the bike when I plug up the battery tender. It was really important for me to be able to see the charge coming into the bike, the charge of the bike, the battery when it's off, the battery when it's running. Um, it's the way it's hooked up is I think the right way plus it has a power switch if I don't want to run it turn it off pull the cover from behind here and it's waterproof I like it a lot let's see what else have I done center rack motor skill again we covered that because it, <laughs> I'm short and I kicked this thing the plastic and I want to break it probably cheaper to buy one of those from Thailand than it was to replace the bodywork. Huh, here's something for you guys. Right there. It's a screw missing. It was missing when I bought the bike. I've emailed the sales guy. I'm going to call it to the service department. I don't even think they can get screws for it yet. Um, it's not doing anything but holding on here. It's still on nice and tight. Not a big deal. Um, doesn't necessarily concern me, but it does. It is without a screw. So. I guess when you're picking up a motorcycle you get kind of excited. Hey, and as long as we're down here, this is the dirtiest bike I own. Lots of, lots of gravel roads so far for the first hundred miles. Talk about the chain. There's a lot of people talk about replacing their chains and stuff. I think I'm fine. I'll just clean that one and adjust it. I don't plan on again doing anything really, really heavy duty. While we're down here, I did get the G-Craft rack. Let me see if I can get a better look at that in a second. I'll put some more light on it maybe. And then under here is the factory toolbox. I've shoved a couple other wrenches in there and the registration, so on and so forth. But this G-Craft, I wanted to buy it. Don't know what I'm going to put on there yet. Um, I don't think I need a gas can. We'll see. If I run out of gas, I'll change my mind on that one for sure. But it connects there and it connects into this bracket. So let's talk about the brackets I wanted to use these for lights and I even still have the one up front right so the one up front still in there and I was gonna use that but man they shook and I found that out when it went to full lock right it bounced this one doesn't it's good they're in a really good spot really thing so I am gonna run one utility light to the rear I don't know what the heck I expect I'll be doing out there that I'll need a work light in the rear but well I'm gonna put one on there got me a, have a crate on the rear yep nothing too much done to this side got a little bit of dirt a little dirt ain't gonna hurt nothing it's the dirtiest bike I own though so there's another one of those finishing nuts I put on there um, acorn I guess acorn nut put one on each one of there no real reason I just have a bunch of them I work on a lot of motorcycles. I know a bunch of motorcycles. Had them laying around. They're stainless steel. I said, what the heck? Threw them on there. Didn't take it a minute. 
Got your mandatory 44 Magnum license plate holders. So the bike itself rides good, plenty of power. I'm 5'7", and I weigh a good 187, and sometimes heavier depending on the mill, but about 180, 187, I fluctuate between those two numbers, and it does well with me on the bike. I think it's a blast to ride. It is an absolute blast. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop for a minute and I'm going to take the covers off the box and the thing so we can talk about the way I've got everything configured and why. Well there it is folks. I took the cover off the back and that's nothing other than a backpack cover off of Amazon. The camouflage cover I had on a moment ago. It reminded me of the OGI Joe uniforms man. I thought it was cool so I bought one. Fits right in. You notice I'm like, I have a um, added some hooks that's the camo cover i got my mask and backpack it's more or less just somewhere i can throw stuff fishing poles tackle box that's my plan is there's a lot of little creeks you can't get to in a car and stuff like that and i'm planning on doing that this summer as i have time for my travels but i like the rack I like the crate i'm gonna move it back a little bit more and give myself a little bit more rack here in case i want to put something here because this is God dang, folks, you can't even imagine. If you haven't seen one in person, that's a huge rack. Um, that's a decent sized crate. And I've added some stuff, the hooks, the handles, the net, the faux finish. The, it's coming right along. And this is off one of my backpacks from a previous life. And... Um, it's just a good ditty bag. Holds a couple of things in it. What do we got in here? We got some zip ties. Um, solar blanket looks like. I think this is, yeah, this is a Bic lighter just in case. Extra USB cable. Ah, just stuff, right? Put my wallet in there. I got a open end wrench. I got the Allen wrenches I need to adjust my lights. Tighten them on the fly. If that happens, they get a little loose but it's not strapped down to the bottom. There's the rest of that moto skill rack. I really like it, man. It's just, it seemed like the moto skill, just looking at it online, looked more robust, and it gives you this nice bar up the top, which you can mount stuff. I don't know what the heck you'd mount it on that phone holder. And the way this is, this is a, um, I don't know, it's alligator clamp or some kind of clamp, but it simply clamps right on this bar. One screw, right, right there, that's it. And it's easy tilt. Well, I say that. It's easy adjust. It holds your phone. It's got landscape mode. It does what I needed to. It holds my phone plenty well. Again, I bought that off of Amazon. And let's see. And if I'm going to try to add links for these things. That's one of my gripes. People say, oh, I bought this. I got that. What else have I done? Um, I got my... Trail 125 keychain. There's the Honda key. I really like having a key. It's a um, it's a physical thing, right? It's my key to my motorcycle. I like it. Um, I've added a little alarm. I'm not gonna really do much. It's kind of loud. It's not. It's kind of annoying, but it's just something if you park it in front of the grocery. Somebody wants to go through your stuff. Um, and then it arms. Gives you motion sensor or not a motion sensor. It's it, all it does is a seismic sensor. Um, turns on and off. It's got a find. It's kind of corny, but um, it serves a really good purpose when you park it at the hiking trail, at the head of the trail or something. If there are the cars and stuff, and you may not hear it, but maybe somebody will. I guess if somebody wants to decide to make your stuff theirs, you can never tell in this world. But. Um, Again, I think that the Moto Skill, very robust, very robust. So the phone charger, again, it's right here. We're gonna turn it on. 12.7 volts. I've been playing with the fog lights and stuff and this, that, and the other, but I bought this cable. It's a right-hand cable, and it goes directly from here to the bottom of my phone. No fuss, no muss, no extra cable. Um, and that's kind of why it just hangs in there. It's very easy to get off of the phone holder whenever I need it. And it doesn't blow around. It doesn't rattle. It does good. Of course, again, I've only got 100 miles on this. All this may change after 
a thousand miles, I might say. It's the worst motorcycle I've ever seen. I doubt it. But it runs good. Holy smokes, man. It's a Honda. And um, if you want to know something in particular, ask me. And I'll let you know. But my thought is, it's a good bike, man. It rides good. It runs good. It's not going to win any speed things. The 250 outruns it. But if I really want to go slow, I'll get on a two-cycle 50cc, right? But that little 250, I love that thing. It blasts. I got 1100 on the other side of the door and a 600 or 650, excuse me, out on the other side of the driveway. But um, overall, guys, good bike. Very, very neat. Get a lot of people, hey, isn't that a, and you go, yes, it is. There's where the tack came in, right? There's your engine. There's the little bash guard underneath. Bolts right in, guess it does its job. I'm not planning on testing it. There's your ABS ring sensor. Your ABS. Your metal front fender. The aux light. Man, those things are freaking nice. I like them. The horn. Cables are nice and tight back there. The front bars, the handlebars. I'm going to have to stop this in a minute. I got some bratwurst in the oven I got to get to. Some sauerkraut and beer to go with them. And I think we're going to have us a nice little German style lunch. There's the exhaust. I was surprised at how cool these heat shields, and that's all they are is heat shields. It's black up under there. But nice and cool. Nice and cool. I think I could wear shorts on this one. My big cruiser. That guy gets way hot, too hot for that crap. There's your rear disc, back wheel. But man, that seat, I mean, that is one of the hardest. And it's a tall motorcycle, right? Hey, there's your, everybody's making a fuss about this thing. Man, I love it. And I love having a Kickstarter. It's got pretty good compression on it. Look, watch the headlight. Keys in my hand. Huh. Interesting. Let me turn my little USB dealio off here. Put this cover back on. A little waterproof. This is can't really see it too much. It's kind of dark. Big retired Oki living in Thailand and ride with Waro. Those were the main guys I watched. There's a Japanese guy, and I don't know his name or what his even name of his channel is, but boy, that guy's a ride to watch. There's that keyhole. Everybody else is showing you. I might as well yeah my key in too. Oh, folks, there we go. Whoa. Hope you can get car sick. But that's underneath the seat. There's the Allen wrench for the toolbox. I also have one of these in my bag up front. Um, this one's kind of a pain. It's kind of a pain to get out, right? It's kind of a pain, right? But it's doable. It's doable. Wouldn't sweat it too much. Uh, a couple guys put a piece of tape on it, and I'm like, whatever. Don't really need that. It'll be okay. Gas cap, don't need a lock. The lock's down there. So this is your helmet lock. And let me see if I can come to the other side. And um, somebody else talked about this. Sorry about that. I paused to grab the actual lock. So to manipulate this, you literally have to put 
this end in, right? And I'm really not trying to make that. Okay, so you got that end in. You bring it down here, loop it into your helmet. Now you got the weight of your helmet and you have to slide that whole mess back and put this end in. Guys, if you want a helmet lock on your bike, look online and there's there's other avenues because this is what a painted butt. Bottom of the seat. Even the foam on this thing here is tough, man. There's your um, tight cell foam. Probably makes it fairly water resistant. I'm not sure. Um, but closed cell foam I found to be fairly water resistant. More so than, well, other crap, I suppose. Here's my wiring for the lights. I think all that came out really nice. I did leave the factory um, reflectors in there. Just didn't have what to do with them. Didn't want to lose them. And they have these nice little holders, so that's good. But that's it, guys. That is the 2021. 2021 Honda Trail 125. Guys, I love it. It's a cute bike. It's cool. I enjoy kitting it out. Had a good time with it so far. First 100 miles have been very, very nice. Transmission before I get off here. So, I think those are a 10. Right? Something like that. That's a 10. So, that's how it rides, right? So my front toe is on that one most of the time. Doesn't push down, I don't really have any problems. When I, my foot is so short that I actually move my foot back and shift my gears and then I move it up, right? Because that's upshift and downshift. No clutch handle. So you just literally roll back off the throttle. Whack. Shift it up. And I found if you do it smoothly, right, not act like you're trying to race it, it cooperates, shifts nice. Anything else? Well, no big how to video here, guys. This is how to be cool. And this little bike, I think, will do that. I think it is cool. I've had quite a few people stop me as I'm riding it around, ask me about it. Handles gravel roads really nice. Handles the potholes nice. I did have one, though. Boy, that one pothole, it spanked me pretty good with that hard-ass seat. Whew. I think that it will um, allow a little additional cooling on it. As of right now, I have no plans on hopping it up or anything. I think I'll keep it just the way it is. I'm very, very happy with it. I love getting out on it. I love the fact that people wave, they point. Nobody really knows what it is. And some very, very, very cool emblems. They went with the retro Honda Motor Corporation. I had actually was going to Originally, I was going to throw a couple of Steal Your Face stickers on those. But I really like the retro. I like the retro very, very well. I like it. 2021 Honda Trail 125. I don't know if it's, you can see it over here. A lot of people talk about that. Huh? The bare paw that's kind of ghosted in there. I'll be able to show it to you. Better if it's outside next time. I did change the oil today. So, real quick. I, can't, I said that like seven times. Real quick, I'll just stop talking to you guys in a minute. You know, that <laughs> that is not um, that is not out of my motorcycle. That is off my spare. Um, Let's see if I can find it in here. 
So I don't know if you guys can see that. That chunk of metal is out of that 125. And that ain't just, the, that's a pretty good sized chunk of metal. And there's some other stuff in here too. There's some other junk in here, right? So, if I had to tell you anything on one of these little engines, I'm not an expert, however, I do work on a lot of bikes, is change your oil often, use what it calls for, and get a magnetic plug to put in it. I use the um, MPO one. I want to do that. I freeze. Use MPO one magnetic plug on it to catch these shavings now, and I changed my oil first time at 108 miles. 108 miles changed. Get that clean oil. But I was kind of surprised. The oil itself isn't so bad. But I don't know if you can see those metal shavings on the bottom or not, but um, interesting. So hopefully that catches the majority of it. I've seen several of you guys out there that have done that, and that's a great idea, good tech tip as it will be. Okay guys, thank you very much. I'll take a look at this video and make sure it's not too bad. And hopefully I'll get it uploaded tonight. But I wanted to I am gonna put some cork in the bottom here. I've got some. Got a couple other projects in the wings too. This is for my daughters. That's my carbon fiber helmet. We're gonna do some exhaust wrap on the 250 and do a clutch job on it and um, yeah, basically restoring it. It's a 2004 of just over 5,000 original miles. Fits her like a glove. But oh, see you guys next.